Okay, before we get started today, I thought you guys might like to get a good shot of my little GoPro setup that you're going to see me using. The camera's not in there, but that's how, that's the size of the uh, camera housing, so you can see compared to my hand that this is uh, a really easy to manipulate setup. This is the microphone, the Rhodes microphone. It's, it's directional, but I have it pointing up so that the sounds that if I'm walking around, it can pick up my voice all around it. And I'm telling you, you can really tell the difference. This is a little... Um, Anchor uh, extra power. It's got, uh, I think, uh, what is that? Uh, 10,000 milliamps of extra power in case I need it for the uh, loom cubes up here. I got loom cubes on each side, and that's what gives that nice crisp color. You, uh, you're not seeing that nice crisp color right now because I'm filming the looms, but these can also be, uh, these are Bluetooth and can be operated by the cell phone. The cell phone will operate this camera and the lights at the same time. Now we're going to be setting up again with the uh, with the launch. Uh, I've gone I've gone through this car. Uh, this is the schematic on the uh, instrument cluster. I was I was getting a, a code. The only code that I was getting I was getting from this instrument cluster on this car. And this uh, 2006 Ford Taurus is known for this problem. Even though I only have 47,000 miles on this car, this is exactly uh, the code that's that it's throwing up. And sure enough, when I started checking it, uh, I realized that the uh, instrument, uh, the um, information lights uh, were the odometer and uh, the mileage in uh, trip setting and all that stuff, that little uh, light panel right there, it has, a, it has a short. And usually what goes on on that is the, the diode on the board will burn out and it will cause that uh, display to, to just go out. So... It was uh, it was sort of straight out to ground, and I could show you on the uh, thing, and I will. But for the for my beginners that are, that are watching, this would be over over that would be too complicated for you right now. Before you even learn Ohm, before you even learn Ohm's law on a simple series circuit, I don't want to get you in, in over your head on something like this. But you will be able to understand this before we get done. I I guarantee you. So what what I what I decided to go ahead and do because. Um, I want to get my uh, Kia in here about about that uh, converter, that torque converter problem that it might have. I, I'm just uh, wanting to really get my hands on that. So, what I decided to do with this Taurus because this is the first thing time this anything has, has popped up like this on this engine. I wanted to uh, just get it out of the garage. I, I I've done. I just put the new starter on down there. This is the, the one I put the starter on. We're going to go over that starter, and I'm going to show you that. And um, then what I did. This is how I did. It, what I decided to do. I went ahead and I did a parasitic draw, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that. I might even have that filmed. And uh, I did a parasitic draw on it, and and it sure enough was pulling down about 1.5 when I started with it. So then I, I hooked up the launch, I, I pulled up the code on the instrument panel, I went in there and I took the uh, light switch out and I took the, the, the little, uh, the three switch set for the odometer and all that, reset and everything. Now that has, uh, that has four wires going to it, but only two of, the, uh, only two of those wires actually go to the uh, instrument cluster and send back a signal to the uh, micro, or to the computer. The other two wires, well, one was a ground, of course, and then uh, the other wire was a blue and purple wire, pink wire, that went over here to this light switch that uh, brought power to the adjustment for the, uh, for the, for the uh, instrument cluster lights. And so, you know, don't get fooled because you have four wires right there. You're thinking that each one, and it had four pins on the connector, so you don't get fooled thinking that all four of those wires are going to be independent at, for, for each one of those pins because that is not how that module was set up. So let's say, for instance, if you got in there and started messing around with a power probe and didn't know what you were doing, and you stuck that power probe to, say, that 5-volt uh, signal, the 5-volt reference signal pin, and you gave it a, a, you know, a healthy 12 volts, well, boom, you just blew your whole 5-volt reference in your computer, probably, and then it's, you know, then it's worthless. The computer cannot communicate with the car without five volt reference that's a good way to always check to see if you got a problem with the ground to see if you got five volt reference because the five volt reference will never change on the car when it goes to all the different things that have to talk back to it that's how, what it uses to signal and get its feed you know feedback on those things but anyhow um the uh 
so what I'm saying is that that three button switch up there on the dash I'll show it to you real quick if you can see it in the dark which I doubt I don't have the loom cubes on but there it is right there the little trip switch and all that well only when you push either one of those three buttons it still sends the signal up the one signal wire and then it sends the 5 volt reference to it with the other wires so you had two wires in the middle and only those two wires but only one of those wires sends the signal back to the computer on either one of those three buttons and that's demonstrated on the schematic over here so you know you, you just can't jump in there and start sticking something that can feed power back to that car or back to that computer you just can't start sticking it on there i'm going to show you this this uh, one just so you can see what i'm talking about let me see here ah uh, this drawing doesn't have it uh when i when i printed this out i cut i cut half of it off because i was interested in this side i printed it and blew it up a little bit but anyway that's where we're at on this and right now uh here's here's what i've, I've decided to do because i i don't i, I just want to really take my time and go through this i want to pull that cluster out and i want to uh, try my hand I, i'm a pretty good solderer i've been doing that kind of stuff in the plants for years but i want to get a good setup and uh and purchase some good items so that i can start redoing these uh, instrument clusters because I, I can see there's really a good opportunity in that and i believe i could get into that end of it too besides that you know i want to do it my i want to do my own in-house stuff as much as i can so that's just another setup you know and something that i'm gonna uh, definitely pursue but anyway what i decided to do after i got through plugging all that stuff in and all that um i i realized that 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 uh that that short that it's talking the code that i got for the instrument cluster was that there was a short to ground in one of in the bank one switch now that bank one switch is the one over there where the headlights are at uh control and and has to do with that three button thing i showed you there i believe i couldn't find anything that said bank one on any of the schematics uh on that i pulled up from mitchell so uh, i'm gonna keep you know I'm trying to look at them and use logic and try to figure out which one of what it was talking about, but I think it has to do with the um, with the instrument cluster itself and over there where that diode is and, and that type of thing. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it up. But what I decided to do in the long run or in the short run, I went out and bought me a really strong, powerful battery, and it's got 800 800 cold crank. 800 cold cranking amps at zero fahrenheit degrees now that's pretty good and it's also got uh, 75 amp hours of of you know supplying uh the voltage full voltage and 75 hours i don't see how this car could ever you know or this this little drain that it has the drain is no more than uh, what was it uh um, when I was doing the parasitic draw where I disconnected the positive battery and I put the, or the negative side of the battery and I put the voltmeter in between set on 10 amps uh, DC and, and I and I, it was it served as a fuse itself more or less but it shows the amperage draw and uh, so I was showing 0 0.020 and then it would it would uh, so it was showing what would that be is that uh, 200 milliamps or 20 milliamps i think i had it on the um so i think i had it on the 10 10 milliamp scale and um uh so i'm gonna have to look at that <laughs> i'm gonna have to go over the book i can't remember how to read my scale but anyhow uh it's uh it's not it's not enough uh i also put it uh, put a dc uh low dc low voltage amp probe on there and uh it was showing uh a very very small draw uh below about i think maybe a tenth of a uh, tenth of an amp or something like that so the point is is that the amperage draw that i have right now uh if it doesn't get any worse on that instrument panel and i'll keep an eye on it just run a i'll just run with the launch it's so simple with a bluetooth connection just run a deal on it every now and then and and, and watch for a uh, check engine light but it didn't throw a code on it i mean on the on it didn't th cause it to throw uh the light or turn the light on so uh, it's just minor and uh it's it's also has this uh this electronic um 
uh, what do they call that? This electronic air temperature uh, sensor up here in the front on that system and something else too. And uh, the IACP, I think, uh, IPC was uh, on that. But, you know, it's all, it's all something that, uh, that can just, anything can ground, you know, can ground out on it or short out on it. That's why these instrument panels matter every now and then. Every one of these are gauges and indicators and lights and stuff. And any one of these can ground out. And then you have several reference voltage uh, places coming out and some battery here. This is, that's that uh, I was telling you, the ambient air temperature sensor here out in the front here. That comes down and that's bringing a signal just straight into this. And that's, uh, you know, right into, this is the PCM here. So any one of these things, I mean, the instrument cluster right here, and that's talking to the PCM. So any of that could be, any of any one of these could be shorted out. But it was saying bank one, but I've looked all over this and I cannot find bank one. Uh, there are several places where you have the head, but this is over here where that switch controls the headlights and, and there's another part of it down here, so you can't just look at these with a with a line diagram like this right here. It's not like they're all just in you know right there following each other. That's not like that at all. That gauge that it was showing is the temperature gauge is out here, and the computer is over there. And so I mean you know you can't uh, rely on the way that's logically laid out that it's going to be logically laid out in the car that way. So uh, that's why I'm saying this is. For the uh, for you new guys, for the new beginners, you can't uh, look that far ahead because that could be very confusing to you. But we're going to get you started on on learning the the, the principles of, of electricity, and you're going to learn Ohm's law. Okay, you you have to know Ohm's law. Now that's enough talk about it. I'm going to next time we're going to start the video and I'm going to be in front of the board and we're going to go over some notes. Okay, all right, GoPro, stop recording.